you recognize any similarities between this building and this one? Hi, my name is Amy Hart. I'm the historian here at Hearst Castle. And today I'm excited to talk to you about Julia Morgan as part of Women's History Month. Julia Morgan was a pioneering female professional in the early 20th century and the architect of Hearst Castle. She was the first woman in the world to graduate from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, a prestigious architectural program in Paris, France. And then she became the first licensed female architect in California. Let's go take a look around. Here we are at Julia Morgan's drafting office, where she would spend hours upon hours working on the designs of this ever-evolving project. We know that Julia Morgan would sometimes become so consumed in her work that she might even skip meals, but she always had a cup of coffee and a candy bar in hand. Here we are at the wine cabinet in the Hearst Castle kitchen. Now we don't have any evidence that Julia Morgan enjoyed drinking wine, but we do know that she appreciated the value of wine for her clients here on the Central Coast. Here we are in William Randolph Hearst's wine cellar. It's built at the basement level on the north side of the building, where there's the least sunlight and the least possibility for temperature fluctuations to disturb the wine. This cellar was designed to be large enough to hold up to 10,000 bottles of wine. And it was built in 1922, so the middle of Prohibition. That's why you see such heavy locked doors at the doorway to the cellar. Julia Morgan incorporated a variety of architectural styles into her projects. We see a lot of the European classicism influence here at Hearst Castle, and we also see the Spanish colonial revival style in the farmhand buildings built along the estate, as well as at the Monday Club. You can really recognize the Spanish colonial revival style of the Monday Club through its features, including the terracotta roof tiles, the exposed roof trusses, the ironwork grills on the windows, the exterior stucco on the walls, and the large flagstone fireplace. Julia Morgan was able to apply her architectural training to projects as diverse as the Neptune Pool, the Roman Pool, and one of the most impressive privately owned zoos of the era. You can still see remnants of the zoo in the zebras you might find wandering along the hillsides next to Highway 1. So here we are in the assembly room. The choir stalls are 15th to 16th century Italian Renaissance. The ceiling is 16th century Italian Renaissance. And the tapestries around the room are 16th and 17th century Flemish pieces. But we also see a lot of modern art incorporated throughout the room. For example, the bronze and marble sculpture pieces are 19th to 20th century modern art. So we see how Julia Morgan was able to incorporate all of these diverse styles into one cohesive space. When Julia Morgan needed to visit the construction site at Hearst Castle, she would take the train from San Francisco all the way down to San Luis Obispo. During the construction of the Monday Club in the 1930s, Julia Morgan would stay at the homes of Monday Club members in San Luis Obispo when she would visit the construction site. Now at that time, in the early years of construction of Hearst Castle, Highway 1 was not yet complete, so she would have to take rugged coastal roads, which could take hours to make it up the coast. So you can see, just walking around Hearst Castle can be a bit of a hike. We know Julia Morgan loved going on walks outdoors around San Luis Obispo, and she was able to incorporate the outdoors indoors in a very creative way at the Monday Club. When she would walk around San Luis Obispo, Morgan noticed there are a lot of loquat trees around town. So she commissioned a muralist to paint loquat trees inside the interior walls throughout the Monday Club. Morgan was born in San Francisco in 1872. Julia Morgan was lucky enough to be brought up in a relatively affluent family and with parents who didn't think that her gender should pull her back from pursuing an education and a profession. And so that's exactly what she did. She graduated from the Civil Engineering Program at UC Berkeley in 1894. After graduation, her mentor at the time, an architect named Bernard Maybeck, encouraged Morgan to move to Paris, France in order to enroll in the Ecole de Beaux-Arts, a prestigious architectural program. Now at that time, the Ecole de Beaux-Arts was not yet admitting female students, but there were rumors that they might start admitting them soon. And so Julie Morgan moved to Paris in order to become fluent in French to prepare to take their rigorous entrance exams. 
Julia Morgan ended up taking the entrance exam twice and failing them twice. But after her second failure, her employer in Paris at the time told her that the school was failing her on purpose to discourage young women from applying to the program. This just motivated Morgan to study harder, to show this school that women have what it takes to become architects. So upon the third attempt, Julia Morgan passed the exam and became the first woman to graduate from the Ecole de Beaux-Arts architectural program. Thank you for taking the time to help us celebrate this trailblazing woman. For more information on Julia Morgan or to find out how you can come visit us here at Hearst Castle, please visit our website at hearstcastle.org.